Back to free America. Once upon a time, I said I—I uh, I was joking when I said um, I should call this the Canadian Belt Knife Channel. Um, well, today I'm going to make another Canadian Belt Knife video, uh, except this one is not just the Groman number one, the Belt Knife. Um, I'm also going to cover the number two, which is what this one is. The number three, which is their formerly a military issue knife, the number four, which is their big survival knife, and a uh, seven inch fillet knife, just so that everybody can have a, a quick comparison. Um, first of all, this knife needs no introduction on this channel, right? This is um, the Groman number one Canadian belt knife. It says D.H. Russell Belt Knife Canada. Uh, you can see I put a little use on it. It, it cleaned up pretty darn good. Um, I really, really like this knife. And it holds a really good edge. So, I was looking for something <laughs> just a little bit smaller. And, and I bought this one. So this, you can see from the S right here. That this knife is a factory second. Uh, exactly why it is a factory second, I'm having a hard time finding. Um, but it's got the rosewood grips, like the number one. Uh, this one has a lanyard hole, and this one also has a flat grind, right? It even says so. In case you don't know, uh, maybe the T is why it's a, a second. I don't know. If that's it, then it doesn't bother me at all. Um, the knife is super sharp, like the others. D.H. Grumman D.H. Russell. This one says number 2SF stainless, which means the number 2S. F is the flat grind. You can see it's a full tang knife. It's got the brass handle rivets like, like the number one. It has the jimping, which is not super deep, but gives you great purchase, right? So very interesting little knife uh, and it comes with a sheath so actually this sheath is also marked S and that, I wonder if that means that the sheath is also a second um, if it is I don't know why all right it's got a good welt a little drain hole the stitching is nice and clean it's got the brass rivet A little belt loop. Now the newer knives seem to have uh, the maple leaf and Groman um, stamped onto them, which the older number one sheath and also the older number two sheath and the older seven inch fillet knife that I have, which I will also show you, they don't have that. Also, the colors are different. And I noticed that the older knives have a lighter colored um, sheath than the newer knives. Interesting. So, overall length on the number two, judging my, by, by my 
highly calibrated Fiskars ruler is about eight and a quarter inches. Blade length is about four and a quarter inches and cutting surface is right at about four. Maybe, maybe a tad shy of four inches on the cutting surface. So you can see them side by side. The number one and the number two number one the full length comes out at about eight and three quarters maybe not quite the blade length is a solid four and a half and the cutting surface is I don't know four and a quarter maybe four and a sixteenth or four and eighth excuse me so I'm very happy with this little knife. I've done some uh, vegetable pairing with it. And that's, so far, that's all I've been able to do with it. But I'm very happy with it. And like I said, um, the paperwork that came from the factory did not say why it is a second. Um, also, interestingly, and I'm assuming it's because it's a second, um, the number two did not come with your standard Groman box. Uh, it came in a white box. All right, it has all the, here's the lanyard. It has all the standard Groman paperwork. But it, it's different. from the standard box this is the box that the number four came in yeah the number four came in this one it's black and this is the original box from the number one which I showed you in the original video about this knife and it's dark brown so if anyone knows exactly why the number two does not come in a brown box, or maybe if it is because it's a second, that would be interesting to know. Either way, I'm a huge fan of the little knife. Um, so, here is the number three. Now, the number three knife, once upon a time, uh, was issued to the Canadian military. Uh, and with this style of flap on it, um, they referred to it as a para knife, which was for paratroopers. Uh, they did issue these knives to the Canadian Airborne Forces. They no longer do. I, I don't know exactly why. Um, I do know that in the 90s, um, Canada deployed some paratroopers with us to Somalia and that didn't turn out very well. So in spite of um, of all that um, this is an interesting little knife. Like I said it comes with this this one comes with the flap uh, sheath. There are other types of sheaths available as well. The knife is also sold as a boat knife um, and one of the sheaths has a um, a knot untying tool, the name of which escapes me in any language at the moment. Um, and there's also another open style of uh, sheath for this knife. Now this knife also is available uh, as a flat grind it is available in carbon steel this one as you can see is in stainless steel and um, 
some of the military knives that I have seen are partially serrated down here. Um, and I believe that the one that I saw was partially serrated, but it had uh, a carbon blade. It also had a really cool um, sheath, which had a uh, Canadian flag and R RCAF or CAF, I believe, like for Canadian Airborne Forces or Canadian Armed Forces, something like that. Pretty cool. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find a picture and I'll, I'll put it over here. So, I'm getting a bad glare off of that. Overall length is about eight and a quarter inches. Blade length is about four, it's a solid four and a half. And cutting surface, um, somewhere between three and three quarters and four, depending on, you know, where you start the measurement at. Um, now you'll notice that the shape of the handle on this knife is different from the shape of the handle on the number one and the number two. And I am told the reason for that is so that when you are cutting, you can you can bring the blade all the way down without having to worry about hitting your knuckles. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm sure there's some experts out there who'd be happy to tell me. Um, I'd love to hear that. But here you go. Typical Roman jumping. Typical full tang. Typical, very nice choil right there. I feel very, very comfortable and safe holding this knife and, and using it to cut. Um, the lanyard hole on this knife is not lined, whereas the lanyard hole on the number two Yeah, is lined. Lined with brass, that is. So here's the number two and the number three side by side. Um, and I took the lanyard off. All of these knives come with the, the standard uh, lanyard from Groman. It's basically a black shoelace. Um, for this one, I'm going to swap it out for some paracord. But again, um, so this was a, a new old stock knife. Um, I don't know why my karma is so good for new old stock Gromans, but I'm happy. Uh, it did not come with a box, but it does come with, with a sheath. And once again, you see the difference in the color, right? This one is marked with the maple leaf and Groman, and, and this one is not. Um, so, so here we have the number four. Um, it's a much bigger knife than the others, right? So. There's the number three by comparison. By comparison, the number four is a beast. And like the number three, the lanyard hole is not lined with brass. So the sheath on this knife is a little different. Um, so it has the flap and 
when you put the knife in, the flap folds over this part right here. Right, the sheath is cut to fit the handle right there, which I really like. And then this part flips over. Very, very solid, decent sheath. I like it very much, except when you're taking the knife out like this, the blade is riding against the leather right there. And the same when you're putting it in, if you're not careful, as you can see, the blade will cut into the leather. Now, I've started to cut it a little bit just out of ignorance because I didn't know that issue previously. Um, and there's a couple of interesting fixes for that. One of them is to basically punch some holes in it and have a piece of um, bungee cord, a small piece of rubberized bungee cord, so that when you pull on the flap, it automatically pulls it open. So I'm not quite yet ready to punch holes in this sheath. So let's talk, let's talk about the knife. Again, this knife is much bigger, right? So from here to here, we have a solid 10 inches, maybe 10 and a quarter. So, big knife, right? Feels big in your hand. It's also thick. All right. It's also a solid solid eighth of an inch thick. Has the jimping, right? Rosewood handles. Bolting. Saber grind. Uh, this thing is stupid sharp out of the box. Uh, now, I bought this one brand new full retail. Uh, they're not cheap, but I think I like it a lot. <laughs> You've heard me say before that... I like to have the swedge on top for when I'm skinning larger animals. Um, and let me see here. I mentioned that I mentioned that when I first looked at the knives of Alaska. Now. So comparatively, the Knives of Alaska Knife is considerably smaller, right? But it does have the swedge on top, and this portion of it, let me see if I can, if I can show it clearly. This portion right here is in fact sharpened, right? So the Groman is not it is flat all the way to the tip but that's okay um, like I said my purpose for that is when you're holding the leg of say a deer something along those lines um, and you're hanging it you hang it behind the, uh, the hamstring and in order to do that you have to cut through the skin between the bone and the hamstring um, and that can be hard to do without a good point, right? So, I like that feature. Again, this one is, let me see if I can... Roman D.H. Russell number 4S stainless. Big, heavy knife. No, I don't have a weight. Um, 
But you know what I'll do? I'll put some more of the factory specs at the end of the video, so stick around to watch those. And I'll, I'll try to include the weight with that. Again, big knife. Quarter of an inch thick. And they sell this. This is the survival knife. Sometimes people confuse the survival knife for the military issue knife. And um, to the best of my knowledge, this knife was not issued to the Canadian military. All right, so one last one here. And again, you can see the difference in the, the sheath. This is an older knife. This one's got some use behind it. Uh, it's a number, a, a number, no it isn't. It is a seven inch flexible fillet knife. Okay. So if you don't know, Groman has an entire line of kitchen knives. You see me not trying to cut the sheath right there. Now, I happened to cross this knife. I happened to have a good seven inch fillet knife. Um, but since this was a Groman, I, <laughs> I had to have it. Again, brass rivets, lanyard hole. This is a flexible stainless blade. As you can see, I've put some use on it. And actually the person before me put some use on it as well. It's got the Groman logo here that you don't see on their belt knives. You do see this on their kitchen knives. Groman stainless picto. Nova Scotia, Canada. Now this is not a full tang knife, right? Let's see if you can see that. It's like a three quarter tang knife, maybe more. It's got a nice shape to it. And frankly, <laughs> I've become a real fan of this knife for uh, skinning catfish because, or, you know, for processing catfish, because I like to be able to get in there between the skin and, uh, and the meat. So let me see if I can show you this. It's flexible, right? This is a flexible knife. And being flexible, it helps you to, to do that, right? You can put a little pressure without cutting through the skin. Outstanding piece of equipment. So, thanks for joining me today here in Free America. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. And I'll give you a little family portrait here. <laughs> Get Grandpa out of the box. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Proof that I spend way too much money on knives. <laughs> I really like these Gromans, or or I wouldn't, right? I wouldn't spend the money on them. Um, I hope this was entertaining. I hope it was enjoyable. I hope it was educational. Um, I look forward to your comments and corrections and questions. And thanks for joining me. God bless America.